Hello everybody, I'm Doc Ian. This is Monday, the 7th of March, 2016, and I'm bringing you my latest update on my painting progress. So we're starting out with uh, Joe here, Joe March. Uh, where, uh, as you can see, I've done a bit. I've done the coats, the blue coats, uh, her white shirt underneath the coats. I've done the skin, the hair, and her little pet rodents on the shoulder. I don't know if that, I, I'm gonna call that finished. Maybe I wanna keep working on some of these things a little bit more. We'll, we'll see how, how it comes out when I see the footage back. Um, what, but the way I see it, the main portions left are everything leather and metal. And some, some other minor things like, like the, the little bits of, of books you can see peeking through here on the, uh, the carrying bag. Now for metal, there's going to be two, maybe three different colors. The sword blade is going to be steel, of course, and it's gonna be a bright silver metallic. The gun is gonna be more a dull silver metallic, more, more gun metal. Uh, and then the, um, the sword guard and the buttons on her coat and various buckles and so forth, I think I want to be brass. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna go for two different brassy or bronze colors. I don't know if that, nobody will notice, I suppose. Uh, I'll, I'll just go one color. For the leather, because there's so much leather, I'm thinking I want to try to figure out two different leather colors, maybe one lighter and one darker or something. And then I need to figure out which parts to make which of the leather colors just to get some differentiation. Like for example, having having the belt be one color and then the holster and scabbard another. So, so you get some contrast between those. But then the, the messenger bag would not, I mean the strap and the bag would probably be made of the same material there. Uh, so that wouldn't make any sense to be something different. So I'd have to think about which one to go for there? Hmm. Oh, and of course the the stocks of the two rifles would be wood, which would be a third brown color. So, well, those are my plans for this model. And here we have some Frosty Frostgrave miniatures finished. Now, the spiders are not all that complex. Uh, the eyes and the fangs and the claws are the only things not painted this fur color, um, which is rather simply done. Uh, the, <laughs> the fur on the grill is actually the exact same color as the fur on the um, spiders, which you might wonder why, but uh, in practice, I don't think it's likely these will hit the table at the same time. So I don't think people will notice. And um, as I mentioned, I went for this sort of bluish white instead of the gray, which is on the studio paint job. I don't know. I'm, I'm biased, of course, but I kind of prefer my paint job to, to this one. But, you know, uh, what do you think? Anyway, that's them. On to the next thing. And here we're loaded for bear. These are um, all the Foundry Miniatures bears and the North Star bear here. I only did a snow base on this one. Also painted a slightly lighter color and try to go for like the different shades of brown, especially on these two because they're the same sculpt. And here in front we have the black bears. Um, yeah, they turned out, out okay. Uh, the thing about animals like these is that when looking at reference pictures, 
it looks to me like most bears in nature, they actually have some fur-free areas like the snouts and the paws. But um, basically all of these, they're, they're sculpted with fur all the way out to the claws and all the way out just to the very tip of the nose here. So there wasn't a whole lot to paint except fur. You know, just fur texture all the way through. And, uh, well, yeah, so I did. And that was not difficult. <laughs> it's a pretty easy... Thing to paint and they don't look that exciting but they're just natural beasts they're not you know there's nothing fantastical about them and another batch is complete currently on the painting table in terms of beasties uh, are these the rats and boars uh, which the bases are pretty much painted they they still need grass and the like of course but that comes right to the end and as for the bodies they've just simply got some base coats splashed on um, but they will paint up quickly if past experience is any guide these will definitely be done by next week well here's what's next in the production line for Frostgrave these two, these two at the end here are the Ice Toad and Snow Leopard uh, sort of official Frostgrave minis from that pack, uh, a cat and a toad. The, the rest of these are uh, Reaper miniatures. First off, the Ice Toad, which is called the Ice Toad in the Reaper catalog, which is, you know, very different from the North Star Ice Toad, but hey, there you go. Then we have more cats that I'm going to paint up as more snow leopards. This one was left over from the Animal Companions pack that I got the, a wolf and a small spider from. These three are from another pack called Ferocious Felines, and they're slightly smaller and they're furrier. They have more texture to them, so they're going to be, look a bit different. But I'm going to paint them all up as snow leopards, and I just realized what punishment I'm getting myself into because painting leopard spots is uh, a, a time-consuming process <laughs> let's just say that but well looking That's even further into the future I think the next thing will be a lot of werewolves I, I picked up four different werewolves from Reaper miniatures we have a male werewolf there's the female here's the female werewolf, and then there's Jean-Paul Duchamp and Jean-Paul Werewolf, which I guess are the same character, but by different sculptors from different time periods. This one looks a lot beefier and uh, more aggressive. Uh, so that's them. Oh, this one is in several pieces. Well, some of them are. And, and also, I'm looking at this model from Heresy miniatures, which they call a snow troll, and and you we have ice trolls in, in uh, right here. Let me look at what it's like. It's a resin. It's not coming out. It's a resin thing. Here's the lower body, upper body. It's gonna take some. hands and a choice of two heads now one one of these is more boring than the other let's see if we can here is one that is maw open and one that is mouth closed why anybody would want to use the boring one with a closed mouth I don't know maybe if you were making several of them and you wanted some variety perhaps I think this looks more like a yeti than a troll, to be honest. But heck, I'm I'm gonna. If if they call it a troll, I'll call it a troll. Well, eh, whatever. Anyway, you might see this assembled next week, if I get around to it. I 
Malifaux's kind of been on the back burner for a little bit. I, I did go in and work on this um, mysterious effigy. If you recall what was done last time. I've worked on the purples. That's, that's essentially all that I've done. Of course, that's like 75% of the model is covered in purple. So, so that's a, a big chunk of it. Uh, I'm not. Don't know if I'm happy with it. It's a very difficult color to work with to get highlights done properly. But uh, like as you can see on the um, Studio Paint job, it is quite a lot of purple. And uh, yeah, well n now that I've got that background color done, maybe I can feel inspired to go in and paint the uh, the other bits. Um, now for the Spawn Mother, I. I've just laid down some base coats. I've tried to just get a general idea of where I'm going and and I think maybe not keep the lily pads pink, but you know, they're just <laughs> that's just for contrast. But generally you can see I'm going with a sort of dirty yellow olive green uh, feel to it and I I, I will uh, I'm gonna up the contrast by making the water, the murky swamp water, darker and but keeping um, the model lighter. So we have that contrast, the, the, the so slightly lighter colored beast right, rising up in the dark water. I didn't get around to to putting together the hooded rider. It was just it's just too. Uh, <laughs> it looks like too much work. Uh, so so I did something easier. Uh, these are not Malifaux models per se. These are our goblin casualties from um, uh, heresy miniatures. That I decided, why not try to use these as as corpse markers for Malifaux? Now they are clearly goblins that have sort of pointy noses and pointy ears and and um, bare feet, so. Uh, why, why other races would leave goblin or I suppose you'd call them gremlins in Malifaux corpses I don't know but eh. I, I just thought it would be fun so if something's fun I'll do it And here we have the chaos tree. Uh, there's been no scenery completed this week. Well, apart from, from the stuff I showed you in the midweek ramble, the the, um, the Gale Force 9 uh, Battlefield in the Box stuff, uh, I guess you can blame my my work on that for slowing down work on other scenery projects. I've, I've continued base coding the different portions of it just to try to get an idea of uh, uh, what's what here? Uh, I have not delineated stuff like the chains yet or the I suppose mushrooms or, or something growing here on the base But I've got the wood and the moss and uh, the, the jaws and the uh, paler wood underneath the bark uh, It's not gonna be that white. It's gonna be more of a beige sort of light wood color um, Yeah you know, as I said, just to get an overall idea of it. <clears throat> and so last week I complained about the fit on this thing. Now that I've put it together, you can perhaps see that I wasn't joking. Because in all these gaps here and here, I've had to green stuff it to fill um, quite large cracks. And it's not that I'm clumsy putting it together. I might be that as well, but that can't be the major issue because all of them fit at the top and the bottom, and then there's gaps in the middle, which means they're they're not straight. The, the sections are bowed. They're slightly warped outwards, so kind of bow-legged. Um, but oh well. Now now with all this green stuff, it's it's pretty darn solid. I, I did not attach this section uh, because I want to be able to paint both sides of it and access both above and below it. 
and that's going to be easier leaving it off for the time being and also gives me more time to figure out which side I want to be the top. You know, I could, could have it loose and flip it over, but it's not stable because it has this edge here, which doesn't rest on the thing, on the tab. There's a gap there. So, yeah, it's if, if I stand a miniature, if I just leave it like this and... Uh, I can have a miniature standing here, but not here. It would just fall over. So I'm going to have to glue it in place when I'm done. But it's easier to paint beforehand, and like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the scroll work should be on top. It to me, it, it's a bit more interesting than this. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I have to flip it around just like this. Oops, darn it. Anyway, um, I'm gonna prime it and start painting. Oh, and yes, <clears throat> I, I, I thought for a while that I wanted to use the. I, I, you could have these side panels sticking out from the this direction instead and have these pillars one on in front and one in back the problem then would be that this thing would look very unnatural just hanging out straight into the air without having a, a side to stand against I, I mean I suppose you could have varied it and just had one also these tabs would look really weird um, <clears throat> also, it would take up a lot of space. This, this configuration is more compact and uh, easier to work with. So, I'm finally ahead of the curve. And uh, let's hope that number keeps rising. Anyway. I thought I'd close out by giving you a hint of my next big project. Why am I starting yet another project, you wonder? Don't I have enough stuff going on? Well, yeah, but most of it is kind of kind of army painting. I mean, I'm painting large numbers of beasts for Frostgrave, and uh, the Malifaux is not, strictly speaking, army painting, but it's, it's very, very game-oriented. I like having one slow painting project in the works at any one time, at least. One model that I'm taking my time with. And the one currently uh, filling that slot is the mini I showed you right at the intro of this video. And she will be done pretty soon. Probably next week. If I, unless I, you know, totally get sidetracked. So, what's gonna um, fill that spot? Well, I have all these DVDs from AG Productions by Christopher Davidson. He has a YouTube channel also, by the way, which I quite like. I, I, he has a whole series of DVDs, and I have all of them, and I've painted my way through almost all of these tutorials. I did that before starting my YouTube channel, actually. However, there is one video here, one set of um, tutorials that I have not... Uh, done, not not painted my way through yet, it is this guy here, known as the Dark Wizard. Uh, and the reason I haven't done him is I did not do these in order of publication, I did them in order of difficulty. He has a, let's see if you can tell, a sort of uh, difficulty level for each um, tutorial, like this Space Marine is 3 out of 6 average difficulty. The Dark Wizard is the only one that is all the way up to 5 out of 6. That's the most difficult one he's produced so far. So I saved that one for last. And now I feel kind of up to the task. So how... Um, so I've done all these, I've done the turnids and so forth. This is what he's supposed to look like when he's done. Um, as you can see, he's a wizard, he's kind of in dark robes, and he has got uh, a, a scythe with uh, roses on it, and he's got some sort of skull emblem on his hat. How do you, where do you get this mini from? Well, you build him out of this kit. And as you can see, this is a kit with, for putting together two wizards, and it has a lot of options. 
you can see here how GW have put them together in various different ways. None of them match exactly what uh, Christopher did in the DVD. Uh, so, I am going to try to copy Christopher's painting, and this will take a while, but I just thought I'd give you a heads up that this is the next project. Um, that'll be all for this week, I think, um, unless I put up some review or something later on. Um, but until next time I see you, have a nice week. I'm Doc Eon, and I'm signing off.